All right, welcome back to another exciting edition of As the Journey Turns. Brought to you this time by Campbell's Soup. Mm -mm, good. Soup is good food. And by yours truly, Dave, uh, the real music observer, observing real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. On this edition, this episode of the never-ending soap opera, Neil Sean decides to post something that's kind of negative uh, toward Def Leppard and Jonathan Cain. So he's done two things at the same time. Um, if I'm trying to sell tickets and I'm also trying to be a good team player, which I, I don't know, Neil and John, that whole relationship doesn't suggest that Neil is a good team player, although everything has been worked out. I don't know. Again, they need a communications person. Who's going to be the communications czar? Okay. Somebody needs to put their foot down and say, you know what? Um, before you post this, can I just take a look at it? Um, so Neil Sean decided to post a review from the Mercury News, which is a San Francisco newspaper. Um, review. Here's the headline. Journey easily tops Def Leppard in the battle of classic rock bands. <laughs> They're in San Francisco, right? And a couple of things that you're going to notice here. I'm going to read some of this article. Uh, everybody in attendance knew what was going to happen. With pretty much all the buzz in the ballpark centered around uh, the Bay Area group, meaning Journey from start to finish in this five-hour show. How can it be centered on Journey if they're not playing for five hours? The show also featured Def Leppard and the Steve Miller Band. This guy doesn't seem to be too interested in the fact that Steve Miller is from San Francisco, used to live there, and uh, in the early days was definitely a Bay Area band. Just kind of weird. Uh, the only people who apparently didn't see this coming were the tour organizers. Now, this is an interesting thought um, where they scheduled Def Leppard to go on last. Now, who's who's organizing the tour? Um, who's in charge of when the bands go on? This is a huge mistake. Journey should have gone on last. In fact... The fact that Steve Miller is from the Bay Area, I would have put Def Leppard on first. So that that's just me, and I'm sure it's either got to be Def Leppard or Journey closing the show. I think they alternate that, but they decided to do the wrong alternating on this particular night. After Journey had just absolutely crushed its 90-minute set in front of 25,000 fans... Def Leppard would pay a heavy cost for the decision where they were going on last. They would pay a heavy cost. What kind of cost would they pay? <laughs> it sounds like Def Leppard will never recover from this concert. They'll be eating Campbell's soup every day now. The English Rock Act delivered a fine set of music, but it definitely couldn't match Journey's performance on basically any level. Really, including in terms of set list, energy, musicianship, and most certainly connection with the crowd. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, most of the fans who were physically and emotionally spent from just having seen Journey still stuck around to see Def Leppard. Now, quick observation. This was a five-hour concert. Gilligan's Island was a three-hour tour, right? Of course, it turned into, what, three or four seasons on CBS, but uh, that's because of the uh, fearless crew of the Minnow, who, anyway, that's just another story altogether. Um, so the fans began to make their exodus with just a few songs left, almost like they were collectively saying, okay, we were here for Journey, but we wanted to check Def Leppard off our list. Again, this new going to concerts because you have a bucket list. This is what people do now. Well, it's on my bucket list. How old are you? Are you 100 or something? How old are you? 
Maybe because you went to CVS too many times, maybe that's the issue and you just, you got your QR code and you walk in and you're like, who knows, this could be it. Everybody's just crossing, like, it's not like these guys won't be back next year. At least Def Leppard will probably be back next year and they're definitely not going to be on tour with Journey. I can almost guarantee that. I don't think anybody wants to tour with Journey after what's been going on this year. But who knows? Maybe everybody will be back. Steve Miller, is that a good pairing? Steve Miller, Def Leppard, what do those two bands have in common? Mm, not much. You know, really, very little. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that's about it. Um, midway through the band's set, and before it had gotten around, we're talking about Def Leppard here, to playing hits such as Rock of Ages and Photograph, it appeared that at least a third of the crowd had made an exit. Okay, it's a five-hour concert. I'm out of here. I'm tired. I want to go home. I've seen too much music as it is. I'd put a max on this like three hours. Three hours is plenty. Uh, show started at six. Gets over at nine. That'd be good. I could get home, depending on where I live, and get to bed at a decent time. But no, I'm going to be up past midnight. I had a friend who went to go see Sammy Hagar, and he got home at like midnight, and I said, did you enjoy the show? Oh, yeah, I had a great time. I'm like, yeah, I was sleeping for like two or three hours at that point, so I just, I really enjoy sleeping. I just do. As you get older, sleep becomes more important. Um, So the reviewer says here, after the crowd had made an exit, that this didn't have to happen. The phrase that I kept hearing repeated from fans all night long was something like, I thought Journey would headline in the Bay Area. And yes, organizers should have made that happen. So who are the organizers that should have made that happen? Uh, Neil and John, and now they've got the third party guy. Can't they talk this out and say, maybe we should headline, maybe we should tell the other bands that, we're in San Francisco. This is our home turf. Maybe we should headline. And would have fans would fans have made their way out of the stadium after Def Leppard because they were tired if Journey was the closing band? We don't know. But this guy seems to think that Def Leppard just really bombed and Journey was amazing, which maybe maybe they were. Steve Miller Band also had home field advantage, yet there simply weren't enough fans in the stadium as he, as he took the stage around 6 p.m. While most people were still battling traffic and parking issues. Interesting. So Steve Miller went on too early, 6 p.m. The show started at 6, which I approve of that. But it gets over at 11? That's just crazy. Still, the 80-year-old former Bay Area resident who was the first of the three Rock and Roll Hall of Fame acts to perform on the night, made fine use of his hour-long set as he cruised through such all-time fun classic rock radio staples as Jungle Love, Take the Money and Run, Jet Airliner, and The Joker. Everyone tells me Steve Miller's having a great time out there and doing a great job, as he has a great time. Then Journey hit the stage. Now listen to this opening their 90-minute set with a double shot, blazing shot of Only the Young and Be Good to Yourself. Two songs, by the way, that uh, most people apparently don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm just saying. Other reviewers have tackled this and said 80s drivel or whatever. It's some 80s claptrap stuff that they played. Uh, and the hometown party went into overdrive. All right. The band... Now, this guy calls it a sextet because he's a writer, consists of keyboardists Jonathan Kane and Jason Derlotka, guitarist Neil Sean, drummer Dean Castronovo, bassist Todd Jensen, and vocalist Arnell Pineda. They were in a take-no-prisoners mode for the first portion of the set, continuing to roll through such rowdy rockers as Stone in Love and Ask the Lonely before wooing the crowd with the memorable... Power Ballad Faithfully. Hmm. San Francisco, on our 50th anniversary, uh, we'd like to say that we are forever yours faithfully. That's what Jonathan Cain said as he stood before his eye-catching 
red grand piano. It's eye catching, folks. Um, so I'm trying to scroll down here. Even the current challenge, the current challenge, which is what? Which is the ongoing feud between Sean and Kane over things both big and small. Um, I don't know what what's the small thing? The billion dollars on the credit card or whatever? Is that the small thing? He says both big and seemingly very small. Like what? What's seemingly very small? Spending more money than the band has? I don't know if that's small. I don't see anything small about the feud here. And it's really not a feud. It's really Kane saying, hey, Neil, don't spend this much money. Indeed, it might just push it to greater heights, he says. It can't derail the group's live show. No, it's better. I mean, this is... <laughs> is this gaslighting? Is this like, hey, our chemistry is better because of the feud? And this is how the logic goes here. As the two opposing band members seem determined to win the battle of Journey MVP each time they take the stage. Is that what it is? This guy goes on to say, of course, Neil Sean takes that trophy by a wide margin. All right, is this guy being paid by Neil? <laughs> no, probably not. But Neil posted this article. So I'm going to summarize why this was a really bad idea soon. But I wanted to uh, continue because there are some things here that don't make sense to me. His fiery yet carefully enunciated guitar parts were absolutely breathtaking on such winners as Be Good to Yourself, Love and Touch and Squeezing, and Who's Crying Now? How is it that Sean, a rock and roll Hall of Famer, and the sole remaining founding member of one of the biggest rock bands of all time remains so underrated. Neil Sean is underrated? Who's, who's, who says he's underrated? Rolling Stone doesn't count, so that's ridiculous. Uh, talk to Sammy Hagar about Neil Sean, all right? He basically goes on to say if he were in a band like Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd, then he would get more whatever, more accolades. He'd be in the same team or in the same uh, ballpark as Jimmy Page or David Gilmore. I think he already is. I don't think anybody thinks Neil Sean is underrated. But it's good if you need an extra paragraph here, and this guy apparently did. Overall, though, the thing that most distinguished Journey set from others on the bill was the dramatic emotional investment that these fans have in the music. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. Okay, so the fans are invested in the music, but this distinguishes Journey set because of what the fans think about it, not how Journey performed. I'm just trying to figure this out, folks. I'm sorry. Wheel in the Sky, Separate Ways, Lights, Don't Stop Believin', and the like aren't just mere songs for these fans. They are Bay Area points of pride. Even though, as I always feel compelled to point out, Lights was originally written about rival city Los Angeles. But yes, the lyrics were changed, and hence the city by the bay. In direct comparison to that, now get this. Def Leppard simply didn't stand a chance in front of Journey's people as it unveiled a set list with such easily digestible and utterly sheeny, it's like Charles Sheeny, Charlie Sheeny, 80s numbers as rock, rock, till you drop, foolin' and Armageddon it. The group sounded fairly good despite lead vocalist Joe Elliott not being at the top of his vocal game, yet the whole thing just felt so lightweight after the heavy-duty offering that we got from Journey. Now, what's weird is um, Def Leppard plays louder than Journey for the most part. There's a definite thump to the drum kit when Def Leppard is out there. I've been to two shows, and I know. <laughs> I just know it. Um, so this is kind of a weird review here, right? This is sort of opposite day that Def Leppard was lightweight compared to Journey. By the time they were a half dozen numbers into the 18-song set and getting ready to roll into the new song, Just Like 73, which isn't bad, by the way, 
Def Leppard had pretty much lost the majority of the crowd. Some to the exits, others to indifference. <laughs> so it wasn't the five-hour concert. It wasn't the fact that, hey, um, I can do this for two, maybe three hours, but five hours? Yet, Def Leppard would redeem themselves on the last leg of the race, motivating those fans who were still in the house to get up out of their seats and enjoy a main set ending twofer of Rock of Ages and Photograph. And that's it. So why is this article a bad article to post if you're in the band journey? If you're Neil Sean, why is this a bad idea to post this article? I guess this is why this is another interesting addition of As the Journey Turns. Well, it does two things that I think any communications person would tell you uh, are not, they're not good ideas. There are two subjects here that he should probably stay away from. Number one, it makes Jonathan Cain look bad. This guy clearly has a bias towards Neil Sean. Neil Sean wins the battle between, you know, Neil and John, his fiery guitar playing. He's the winner. Okay. Do you really want to project that right now when you're still in the midst of this feud or legal battle or whatever this is, battle for supremacy in the band. But I think even worse than what it says about Jonathan Cain is what it says about Def Leppard. It's like, yeah, I'm going to post this. And the headline, by the way, reads that uh, Journey destroys Def Leppard or something to that effect. Let me go back. Journey easily tops Def Leppard in the battle of the classic rock bands. Um, they're on tour with you. They're helping you sell tickets. It should be everybody is amazing on stage, including Steve Miller. Now, the big mistake here was that Journey should have went on last. Now, if Journey had gone on last, would many of those fans still leave because they're just exhausted? My guess is maybe not quite as many, but I bet you a good portion of them would have left. This concert was five hours long. <laughs> These are people in their 50s, 60s, and maybe even into their 70s, and maybe a few younger people. But you know what? You're not 25 anymore. You're not burning the midnight oil. You're not staying up you know, all night long and showing up at IHOP at 2 in the morning after you drank too much. You're not doing that anymore. These people want to go home. And so my guess is they still would have wanted to go home. So anyway, this is my argument for a communications czar within Journey. Because if you're going to, you know, diss your bandmate, which is kind of understandable here, because the guy says, Neil Sean, he's underrated, and he's better than Jonathan Cain. Okay. Um, and the other issue is, hey, Def Leppard, they're, they're just boring. They can't hold a candle to Journey. That's not what I saw when I went to go see Journey and Def Leppard, and I've got people who are on my Patreon who have told me the same thing. Um, and this guy also argues that the feuding between Kane and Sean makes for better onstage chemistry or it makes the band work harder. Um, he talks about how Joe Elliott is off his game. No mention about Arnell, like what he sounded like. Not even, hey, he sounded great. Just say if he sounded great. Talk about it. It's kind of like news by omission. So way too much analysis here, but yet Another edition of As the Journey Turns is in the can. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications, Patreon, YouTube membership. You know, technically I'm getting more views and more subs, but my revenue never goes up. So if you could help the channel, it, it's maintaining, even though I'm putting up pretty good numbers lately. So Something is definitely up, and um, if you want to help the channel, I'd really appreciate that. Patreon, YouTube memberships, and buy me a coffee. If you like this video, 
buy me a coffee. All you have to do is buy me one. I know people have bought me like five or 10 coffees. That's a lot of coffee. And I really do appreciate that. Um, so whatever you'd like to do. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching as the journey turns. And uh, I'm sure I'll be back with more episodes. So uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, keep it right here.